Finally, Lightroom has introduced a denoise tool with AI technology built in. So this is the complete guide on using the denoise AI in Lightroom, including batch processing unlimited photos in one click. Hello, I'm Chris Parker with parkerphotographic.com and if you're ready, let's do it. Now, for this video tutorial, I'm going to be using Lightroom Classic. However, if we go into Lightroom here, we can see in the detail panel, we have a denoise AI button here, just like we do in Lightroom Classic. So the information I'm going to share is going to be relevant for both versions of Lightroom. Now, in the last few months, I've been testing out the denoise AI in Lightroom as a beta tester and since it's been released, and I found that it works on every type of image from portraits to landscapes, wildlife, and more. And I'm gonna give you some pro tips along the way. So we're gonna go ahead and review a few images real quick, and then we'll get into the Denoise AI tool. So we're gonna take a look at this landscape photo here first that I captured at Letchworth State Park. This was during sunset, and I shot this at an ISO of 400. So typically you wanna remove digital noise when it's apparent, right? So if we take a look here, if we zoom into the sky, we can see there's a little bit of noise, not a lot. There's going to be a lot more noise the higher the ISO setting that you use. And that's going to typically occur in low light situations or when you're shooting, let's say wildlife and you want to ensure that the wildlife is sharp, no motion blur. And you might be using a lens that has a pretty small aperture like 5.6 or f8 which is going to require a higher iso so a lot of times for wildlife when i'm shooting birds i'm shooting at 1 500th of a second to 1 1000 up to 3200 and f8 so that requires a very high iso but for images like landscapes and portraits i'm typically shooting between 100 to 400 and occasionally 800 to 1600, depending on the lighting situation. So can we use Denoise AI on images like this where there's not a whole lot of noise? Well, that's entirely up to you because if we take a look at the final edit that I did here with Denoise AI, I'm gonna press the tab key here to get rid of those panels. And I press the letter C after selecting these two images here to show them side by side. And as you can see on the right, we have our enhanced image here that was run through Denoise AI and it did remove the noise and it's a little bit sharper as well. How cool is that? I love it. So yes, you can use Denoise AI for landscapes and portraits. Let's take a look at this portrait image here. So just because you're shooting at a low ISO doesn't mean there isn't noise there and you may want to remove that. That's entirely up to you. Sometimes I like to have a little bit of grain in the image just to add a bit of a different type of feel or mood to the image. Now for this particular portrait, this was shot at ISO 800 and I did not take this photo, but I just wanna show you, let's go ahead and zoom in here. There is some grain in here in the background and on the face. And we can remove that digital noise, but we have to be careful when we're removing noise for portraits because if you're too aggressive, with the amount of noise reduction, you can smooth out the skin and it's going to look unnatural. Now, I did wanna share with you my own portraits and weddings that I've done to show you how to apply the Denoise AI to those, but all of the client photos that I've taken from 2016 back all the way to 2001, I had converted those files from RAW to DNG. That was just part of my workflow back then. And unfortunately, we cannot use DNG files in the Denoise AI tool. We also can't use JPEG files. So we only can use raw files. So just keep that in mind. If you do convert to DNG or you use JPEGs, you're gonna have to come up with a different type of workflow if you wanna use Denoise AI. All right, so let's take a look at this last image here of this chickadee that I captured. Late in the day, it was cloudy. Actually, that's the finished one. But if I zoom in, you're gonna see that there's a ton of noise. And that's because if I zoom back out here, we can see this was shot at ISO 16,000. 
So that's why there is so much grain in the image. And again, like I mentioned, one one thousandth of a second at F8. So I had to use a higher ISO setting in order to ensure that there was no motion blur or camera shake because it was a little cold that day, the lens was huge, and I didn't have a tripod or a monopod. So can we remove that much noise in the Noise AI and still have a decent quality image? Now, real quick, you might have noticed in this other image that I had selected first, we have all these branches right here and this big one in the back. Well, I actually removed that in Photoshop. Photoshop has a new AI removal tool that allowed me to remove that in about 30 seconds or less. I don't remember. It was really quick. It's the best removal tool I've ever used. And I'll share more information about that at the end. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Denoise AI tool now. We're gonna go ahead and navigate down here to the detail panel where the Denoise AI tool resides via this button right here. We also have our legacy noise reduction options here if you ever wanna use those. It's not something that I'm ever gonna use again because the Denoise AI does a fantastic job. So you can select more than one image at a time and then process those files in bulk via this button here. So let's go ahead and click on that. We'll get this new batch enhance preview window here. And you'll see down here, enhance three images. Once you click that, Lightroom will do its magic and apply that noise removal to all three images. But I'm gonna share with you in a second, a keyboard shortcut where you can bypass that window. Let's first take a look at this image and go over all these options that we have here. So once this window here updates with the image, you're gonna see the enhancement with the noise removal applied right in here. Now, if you wanna see the before, you're gonna click and hold your mouse button, and now it's showing all the digital noise. Once you release, it will show you the enhanced. Now, this isn't a really good spot of the image to view that noise. I tend to like to look at the eyes and faces when I'm doing noise reduction. So we can click and drag to that area, or if you click on this little icon down here in the bottom, it will zoom all the way out, and then you can click anywhere on the image to zoom into that location. Now, we don't have any other zoom levels. It's a one size fits all, so you only get this zoom level, nothing else. So you can either back out or zoom in. All right, so that tends to work out fine most of the time. And again, here's the before and the after. So you can see at the amount of 79 that I currently have it set at, it's definitely doing a good job. Now, it might be a little bit hard to see via the video, but I am losing some detail in this area, especially when I go to the maximum of 100. There will be a few details in the darker areas that disappear. So you wanna be careful on how aggressive you are with the amount, especially for faces. So let's go back into this portrait here and let's take a look at this image here. Let's go ahead and get into the face. And if we do 100, again, it's probably hard to see via the video because of the compression of the video, but her skin is starting to smooth out just a little bit, which is really not that bad compared to the legacy options we had in the past. So just keep that in mind when you're doing portraits, you don't wanna to be too aggressive. So for this particular image, I would probably do right around 70 to 80 to try and retain as much detail as possible. All right, let's go over the other options we have inside of the Denoise AI tool. And up at the top here, again, we have our amount and we can go all the way down to zero. So you can leave a little bit of noise if you want to try and retain as much detail as possible. I believe the default, the first time you use it is 50. For this particular image, I would probably go right around 90. Now, just below that, we have raw details. So raw details is going to enhance the details of the raw file and it's selected by default. Just under that, we have super resolution. I have a video tutorial that explains what super resolution is and how to use it. Basically, it's an upscale tool inside of Lightroom Classic. You don't need a third party tool to upscale your images. There are some limitations, 
but it does an excellent job in upscaling your images and sharpening them at the same time. So check out that video tutorial in the description below. I placed a link inside of there. Now it is grayed out. We can't apply super resolution if we're using denoise and here's why. This file or this edit will then be saved as a new DNG file as you can see up here. So that's one reason why we can't use DNG because it can't select a DNG and then convert it to another DNG. So a DNG file is another type of raw file format. Again, I have a video tutorial on that again in the description below. So super resolution also requires converting from raw to DNG, which is why we can't do both at the same time. So it's either one or the other. And then just below that, we have a little message here that is explaining that if you use the content aware remove tool to do some retouching in your image and or you applied some masking, well, you're not actually going to see those edits in this preview window. However, they will be transferred to the DNG file once you click on enhance. So we have an estimated time here of 25 seconds to do the noise removal and to convert it to a DNG file. And then what I like to do is I like to create a stack. If you don't wanna do that, you can go ahead and turn that off. But that's going to place that DNG file next to the original raw file and group them together in a virtual folder kind of. And it just keeps everything clean and organized for your library. So let's go ahead and enhance this image. All right, so once Lightroom is done converting to DNG, it will then take that file and stack it with the original raw file and any other files in that stack. And right here it says one of three. If we click on that, it's going to collapse all those images down into one, click again, and it will expand. All right, now let me show you how to batch process three or 3000 images. All you have to do is select all the files. I'm gonna hold down my command or control key and select the other two raw files. All right, now to bypass that enhance preview window, you're gonna hold down your Alt or Option key, and then you're gonna click on this button again. But now we get another message here, or another window, basically the same message as before, content aware remove and masking will be updated automatically. We can bypass this little message as well by clicking on don't show again, and then Lightroom will go through and process all those images, however, there's something else you need to know. The last amount setting that you used is going to be applied to each image. So in this case, the last amount that I used was 90. That's too aggressive for this portrait and this landscape. So what I recommend doing is selecting images that are very similar or close to a specific ISO setting. So like 800, 1000, 1250, maybe 1600 something like that. So let me show you how to search for specific images in an ISO range. We're going to come up here to the library module again, and let's go in and select my point Peely folder here. And if you're not seeing this little filter menu up here, press the forward slash key to show or hide it. Now from here, you're going to click on metadata and you're going to get these four little columns here and you wanna click here and select ISO speed. So now it's going to list all the images in this folder based on ISO. So I have three images at ISO 25,600 and 15 at 16,000. So if I want to apply an amount of 90 for those images, I can click on 25,600 to show those three images. And then if I hold down my shift key and click on 16,000, it's going to add those images. And maybe I wanna add in a few more as well at that amount. And now I can go ahead and select all with command or control plus the letter A, go back into the develop module by pressing the letter D. And then I can go ahead and hold down alter option and batch process all of those images at the same time. All right, so real quick, one more thing. Let's go ahead and take a look at this image again. And if you want to learn how I retouch this image in Photoshop, check out this video tutorial right there. Or if you want to continue elevating your Lightroom skills, check out this Lightroom quick tip playlist right there. There it is. So check that out.